Hey everybody, Nate Eaton here with Eric Grossarth in the EastIdahoNews.com studio. A big day in the Vallow case, Vallow Daybell case, however you want to say it. Uh, I'm going to let Eric here kind of tell us what we found in these documents that came out today in regards to the death of Charles Vallow. So Eric, what exactly is this document? Yeah, so this is a document from the Chandler Police Department. It's a synopsis of their whole investigation and what they've learned that alleges that Lori Vallow was involved in the death of her fourth husband. And this is probably the most information, or at least the most new information that we have about Charles's death. The, the most new information. Most stuff that we've heard has come from body camera and police reports that we've received well over a year ago. So there hasn't been much new other than she was indicted last week. But indicted for? For conspiracy to commit murder. And it is alleged that she did that with her brother Alex Cox. Who's that dead. we know is dead. Okay, so um, set the stage for when Charles died. Yeah, so Charles died on July 11, 2019. 2019. So it's been almost two years. We're coming up 10 days from now is that two year anniversary of his death. And to lay the stage of this, Charles Vallow and Lori were living apart at the time. They were having some issues in their marriage there. Lori was living in Arizona, Chandler, and Charles was living in Texas. And Charles came to Arizona that day and was going over to the house to pick up JJ. And there was one story told, but based on these court documents, that story's a lot different than what was told to investigators two years ago. And the story was that Alex, Lori's brother, shot Charles in self-defense because he was coming at him with a baseball bat. Tylee witnessed the shooting. Lori uh, took JJ to school, came back. We've seen the body camera footage where she kind of laughs with the officers. Does not appear to be distraught at all. And uh, this, as Eric, as you said, this tells a completely different story, not only of that day, but of what happened before. So we're going to go through the, the probable cause document here. Uh, what we do know, Eric, is that Charles had uh, tried to get Lori help for yeah. some time, me mental help, help. Yeah, he was trying to get her committed to a mental health facility, at least for an evaluation, make sure she was okay. because. She was making all of these claims that she was part of the 144,000, according to Charles. And Charles said that Lori told him that he was possessed by this dark spirit named Ned Schneider. And who knows who that is? Nobody knows who Ned Schneider is to this day. And, and we was, learned of a yeah. new name today. Not only Ned, but we'll get into the new yeah. name. So for those keeping track, Lori is charged in Idaho with the death of her son, JJ, her daughter, Tylee, and Chad, Daybell's wife, Tammy, along with the, some other charges about like insurance fraud, things like that, m not as severe charges. Now she faces the conspiracy to commit murder in Arizona for Charles's death, which Chad does not face charges in Arizona for this death, but we still have the one open case. Yeah, there's one open case, and that's when investigators start seeing a little more going wrong, according to these documents. They're on October 2nd, 2019, so a few months after the shooting of Charles Vallow. The name's redacted in these documents, but we know that it is in regards to the man that was married to Lori Vallow's niece. He said that he was shot at, and he believed the shooter was Alex Cox. The bullet thankfully missed him, he's alive, to this day, but that's kind of what led investigators that, hey, there's a lot more going on here Brandon in this Boudreau. story. Okay, so we're gonna go through these documents with you briefly and you can see there's uh, quite a bit of information that has been redacted. We don't know what it is and there's you know certain names that are blacked out, there's certain paragraphs, there's one entire page that is blacked out. But the Chandler Police Department did release this, uh, uh, most of the information as far as we know, but there is some information that they have not uh, released publicly that, that will eventually come out. So as Eric mentioned, Lori and, Chad, Lori and Charles were having marital issues. Lori accused Charles of infidelity, which led to their separation. She was living with Tylee. Uh, Charles was concerned for her mental well-being because as, as you said, Eric, she was preparing to leave the 144,000 for the end of the world. Charles talked about how Lori said that he had been 
possessed of a guy named Ned Schneider. And that she went on to refer to Charles in conversation and documentation by the name of Ned. Uh, we've kind of known that up to this point. Then on October 3rd, Chandler police learn of the attempted murder of Brandon. We're assuming that name is redacted, but we, we pretty much know that's who it is. He was uh, fired at uh, with the gun, and uh, fortunately he survived that. Lori then takes off for Rexburg with Alex. Tylee and JJ are missing. Uh, Tammy Dayball dies in her sleep on October 19th. They basically set it all up and say that Lori's extreme religious beliefs uh, are what she what may have caused a lot of this, and uh, they needed to fulfill religious prophecy. So uh, we're on page, these pages aren't numbered, but it was discovered. Here, here, here's, here's some of the interesting stuff. It was discovered that Lori and Chad believed they had extraordinary abilities. Some of these abilities included the power to teleport and cause harm to others, the ability to call up natural disasters, the ability to pray away demonic spirits attached to others, and also visionary capabilities. Because of these abilities provided to them, they felt they were qualified to tell whether someone had a dark or light scale associated with them. This scale would indicate whether or not they had demonic spirits attached to them. Lori and Chad would often refer to these dark spirits by actual names, by a certain level of spirit, or by using the term zombies. Lori and Chad also shared a, quote, trust level in referring to each other. In examining the data, these dark scales were attached to somebody, redacted, Charles, JJ, and Tylee. Many others were also provided with dark and light scales. Coincidentally, if you shared their belief system, your score was favorable. If you offered any opposition to their belief or their destiny, you were seen as possessed. In reviewing the documents collected by the agencies involved, the following would show that Lori and Alex conspired to murder Charles Vallow on July 11th. So Eric, we've heard about the dark and the light in the past. Yeah, this is, that's not new. We've heard all of that before. And it really does though come into play because there are text messages that come out during all of this investigation. And it talks about these light and dark spirits. And really, if you didn't understand that, these messages would kind of be a little confusing if you didn't know yeah. what to look at. And they, they kind of set the stage. So what, what's the first evidence they had, according to these documents, of, that, that Charles needed to be harmed? Yeah, so it says here the first evidence to harm Charles Vallow came on November 3rd, 2018. So November so, before the July, months and months earlier. Yeah, and it's messages between a redacted name and Lori Vallow. And that redacted name is the friend of Lori Vallow and also the widow of Alex Cox, which so, is Zulema, his wife that we know um, he married during all of this transpiring. They married in Las back. Vegas. Yeah. Now Zulema's name is redacted, but we know that she is the widow of Alex Cox. She has not been charged with anything right now. Uh, that may come, that may not. So they basically, what, how, how, how did they get this evidence? Yeah, so they got all of this evidence because Alex Cox, we know, died in December of 2019. So they got his phone, they went and grabbed electronics at his house that day because they were investigating all these suspicious circumstances around that. They got the phone, they seized these phones, and it showed all of these text messages between this person and Lori. So Zulema. We're, we're assuming that that name is redacted. On November 3rd at 2.40, redacted tells Lori she was told by God that she is to protect Lori. In January of 2019, two months later, redacted told Lori that she had a vision that she could create storms and fire and will have the eye of the Lord. Then in Jan on January 6th, the next month of 2019, Lori texted redacted telling her that Charles was blocking her gifts. From this point forward, there's a specific conversation to cause harm to Charles Vallow, who has been referred to as Ned or... Hiplos, which is a name we have never heard before. Hiplos. We don't know where that name came from. We don't know. I, I was trying to look if there's a Greek god named Hiplos or something like that, and I have no idea where that name came from at all, but that's a name that was referred to Charles Vallow throughout a lot. And we can assume these are text messages 
yeah. between them that are redacted For as you page, look through. Yeah, it's black. a page, it's just black. So and Hiplos is now Charles and, and Ned. So there's a, what, a good two full pages of redacted information. Likely, as Eric said, text messages between redacted Zulema and Lori and whomever else, we don't know. Through text messages uh, between Lori and Charles that were seen on Charles's phone. So they got Charles's phone after he died. Lori returned to Texas on June 3rd of 2019. Charles was living in Texas. Yeah, Charles was living there. They're separated, but they kind of go back and forth, trade the kids, try to work things out. Because we know they were going to get divorced, but Charles said, hey, let's try to make this work. So why would they redact some of this and why would they put some out there? Well, they need to build their case, obviously, to prove that they have probable cause to indict Lori. But they obviously don't want all of it out there because it will probably come into play at a jury trial. And some of this redacted information likely affects people who are still living. Some of this other stuff does not. So they did reveal some text messages between Lori and Charles June 3rd of 2019, so over two years ago. At uh, 2132 hours, so that's 9.30, Lori to Redacted. Now, this could be Zulema or another person. We don't know at this point. Yeah. Just got home and got JJ to sleep. Let's go spiritually tonight and work on him. We give the timing to the Lord, but we don't need to relent. This is war. Who's the him? The him, we can assume, is Hiplos, Charles Vallow, Ned Schneider, whatever they were referring to him at that point. Yes, and we're assuming the person is Zulema, that Lori texts Zulema saying, let's go spiritually tonight, work on Charles, we'll give the timing to the Lord, but we don't need to relent, this is war. We don't know if there was a response there. If there was, they don't include it. A few weeks later on June 19th at 9.20, Zulema, assuming, redacted to Lori, oh, and can you meet me at the temple in the morning? I have time tomorrow and we can work on Hiplos. So she's, according to this, planning something with Hiplos, saying it's war, and we, we can't relent. But then we learn about Social Security. So, what do we learn about that? So a few days after all of this, on June 21st, 2019, web history from Lori Vallow's devices show that she was looking up Social Security disability. And it takes you to the application for it, a free evaluation to see how much you would get in the instance that someone would die. And that ties into a text message between Lori from Lori to Chad Daybell on July 18th, a week after Charles was killed. And it reads, so I talked to the insurance company. He changed it in March. So it was probably Ned before we got rid of him. They can't tell me to who, of course, but it's done. I'll still get the 4,000 a month from SS. So this is referring to the life insurance policy, there's a million dollars, changed off of Lori's name to Charles' sister, Kay Woodcock. And again, who was this text to and from? This was from Lori to Chad Daybell. To Chad. A week after Charles was shot and killed. And we know, because Case told us, that Lori was upset that, that Ch Charles switched the million dollar life insurance policy over to Kay because he was worried that something was going to happen to him. And Lori texted Kay and said, I'm left with something like, I'm left with five kids and a dead husband and you get all the money. I'm paraphrasing that. So this is interesting that Lori would send this to Chad and say, he changed it in March, meaning Charles, it was probably Ned before we got rid of him. They can't tell me who, meaning who got the money, of course, but it's done. But I still get the 4,000 a month from the social security. Then yeah. in August of 2019, August 12th at 1.30 PM, Lori has an appointment with the social security administration and they provide her with the actual amount that she would get. And it's about that $4,000 that she told, told Tat, Chad that she would get. And they found that appointment date in her iCloud. So it was stored in there. They found a ton in the iCloud, these text messages and other stuff in the iCloud. So um, around June of 2019, Alex enters the conversation regarding Hiplos or Charles. On the 22nd of June, 2019, Alex started to text blank from blank. 
Through a search warrant, this number was identified as belonging to Alex. It says something like, hey, blank, it's Alex. And then on the 27th, blank to Lori, we're assuming Zulema, but again, it's redacted. Do you think there's a way to change Hiplos to the light? So Alex or somebody was saying to Lori, do you think there's a way to make Charles light again? We, again, we don't know if there was a response there. Here's, here's kind of a bombshell nugget. It, on June 29th, what, what happens with this letter, Eric, that, that a fictitious letter in Charles's name? So there's a letter that gets sent to a person. It's redacted, but there's a letter written as if it was from Charles asking Chad Daybell to come to Arizona to help him write a book. And the discovery of this sent everything into action. That's the word that the police said. So Charles confronts Lori about this fictitious letter and she is like, why do you want Chad to come to Arizona? And Charles goes to Lori and says, hey, come clean about your relationship with Chad or I'm going to go to Chad's wife, Tammy Daybell, and then tell her what is going on. Yeah, so that is pretty, um Damning, I guess you could say. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty interesting that Charles confronts Lori and says, I'm going to go to this Tamra Debo and let her know what happened. Following, and then here's from the documents. Following the discovery of this letter, Charles Vallow began talking to blank, Lori and Alex's brother, so we're assuming the other the brother, brother, about his discovery as well as Lori's radical belief. So it appears that Charles is like, what do I do? And goes to this brother. The two then communicated with each other to plan an intervention in or around July 10th. Charles had arranged to come to Arizona and also arranged travel for this brother. And what day did Charles die? The following day, the July next day. 11th. So this July 10th, he comes in that day planning with an Lori's brother to have an intervention with Lori that, hey, this stuff is getting out of control and we need to talk about this. Let's sort this right. So and they, he dies the yeah, next day. They, he dies the next day. But during all of this, this blank name, Lori and Chad, continuing to message about Charles and Hiplos. Hiplos, referring to him and that name. Here's a key piece that comes in these documents. There is no obvious communication found between Lori and Chad to show that he was directly involved with the planning of Charles Vallow's murder. That is why he has not been charged because police clearly say, we don't have anything solid, obvious, communication between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell that he had anything to do with the murder. Uh, Lori Vallow found out about Blank coming to town through her mother and Blank. So she likely found out about that brother coming to town through her mother and someone else. She learned about the in intervention on July 9th. She reached out to Alex and a few other people to warn them of the elaborate plan according to these documents. And then it goes on to a bunch of names are, are blocked out. Um, and Lori was getting updates regarding the intervention and uh, apparently there was some, some sort of, uh, sounded like a, a bunch of, I don't want to say family drama, but the family was all involved. Lori was trying to figure what was going to happen uh, with all of this. And then in text messages found on someone's iCloud, this blank person asked Lori if she wanted to have their mother do a preemptive strike and confront someone. And and something though, before that too, there's a redacted portion and it says there's no indication blank was talking about killing. So again, there's something there that they've redacted at this time that involves people yeah. still alive. And, so, and it sounds like the yeah. family is planning an intervention to help Lori while Lori is planning something else and Alex. And, likely the death of Charles or, or something. So um, Lori told her sister she was headed to Alex's house on July 10th around 3.58 p.m. During this time, she continued to message Charles and never once confronted him about knowing that something, this intervention, was planned. Lori reached out to someone else, redacted, and convinced her to cancel a trip to Utah for a wedding, telling her, you can't go at all. 
We both need to stay here to defend ourselves. Lori added, it's coming to a head. This week will change everything. Lori would also tell Alex, getting sleepy, so I'm going to need you to stay close to me the next couple days. Blank too. She can't go to Utah. They are planking, planning, some kind of intervention, but want blank out of the way so I'm left alone. I need to come get the stuff at your house tomorrow and secure it. Lots to do. Thank you for standing by me. It's all coming to a head this week. I will be like Nephi, I am told, and so will you. Heart emoji. So Lori's sounding worried about this intervention. Who is Nephi? Nephi is someone that's in the Book of Mormon. He's a Book of Mormon prophet. He, in the Book of Mormon, is commanded to slay a man that has been wronging his family. An doing evil bad. Leader. He was an evil leader, and he killed that man in the Book of Mormon. So Lori is comparing herself to Nephi, who killed a person. And she's telling her brother, at least, that I will be like Nephi, I am told. And you know what's interesting about this? It's not the first time that Lori has referred to herself being like Nephi yeah. in there. There was a recording, the recording. earlier um, talking about how she wanted to kill her third husband, but changed. But in that recording, she said, oh, I'm going to be like Nephi, like the scriptures say. Kind yeah. Of thing, so. Okay, so Eric, we're now up to July 11th. Remember, the family's in town planning this intervention because Lori needs help. Alex and Lori, though, seem to be on a different uh, train of thought. And July 11th comes, that's the day Charles killed. What, what do we know about the timeline? Yeah, so at 7.35 a.m., Charles shows up at Lori's house to pick up JJ, and he texts Blank, telling him that Blank was, or that Alex was there. And then Blank told Charles that they were planning something, and Charles stated, absolutely. And then Blank indicated that he was supposed to spend the night with Alex, but Lori probably blocked this. So we can assume this is the brother yep. of Lori and Alex that Charles was talking to, and they were worried that they were planning something. This was at 7.35 a.m., so in the morning. first thing. Yeah, and, and he said, I was supposed to spend the night with Alex, but Lori yeah. probably blocked it. Now, Charles is shot by Alex. And here's the interesting part. Following the murder of Charles Vallow, Lori took his rental car, vehicle, and cellular phone. The GPS data associated with the phone indicated that the phone left the residence at 7.49. So that message was at what time? 7.35, so 15 minutes later. Lori went to Burger King to get food for JJ, Walgreens to get flip-flops for her and Tylee, and finally returned home at 8.48. So about an hour, she's out shopping. Alex would not call 911 until 8.32 to report the shooting. When reporting the incident, he indicated it had just happened. He was provided with CPR instructions and he acted as if he was performing life-saving measures on Charles. It was not until emergency personnel began life-saving measures that they saw blood coming from Charles's body. This would indicate that Alex performed no emergency aid. Based on the timeline, Charles would have laid dead or dying for approximately 43 minutes before Alex called 911. During this time, phone records indicated that Alex called Lori. Wow. Her husband just got shot and she's out getting burgers, flip -flops. going flip-flops, shopping trip, and we see him drop off JJ at school at some point during this because he doesn't show up back at the house that day. And Alex is at the house calling Lori but not calling emergency responders for 43 minutes according to these documents. Yeah. Wow. And they talk to everybody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right, so we know that the next part uh, kind of summarizes that they told investigators that there was a physical altercation. Lori left the residence. Based on our investigation, it has been proven how valuable Alex Cox was to Lori. His mission on this earth was to protect his sister. The shot into Charles's body as he laid on the floor and the delay in calling 911 would also validate their desire for him to die. So, whoa, 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 back, back up a second, Eric, and explain this. He was shot by Alex, but now they're saying the shot into Charles's body as he lay on the floor. So, was he shot twice? Yeah, so we'll kind of go into how this is. So, during the investigation, they bring Alex into the crime scene, they, or whatever, they perform a walkthrough for investigators. And Alex indicated that Charles was coming at him with that baseball bat 
And he says, while Charles was standing, he shot him twice in the chest. But they go through, do an autopsy, and it isn't consistent with what was said, according to these documents. It says that one shot was consistent with Charles standing, but a second shot entered below Charles's rib cage and exited through his upper left shoulder, causing a shored wound and defect in the flooring where Charles was found. This angle would indicate that Charles was already laying on the floor when this second shot was fired. So he was shot standing up, fell to the ground, and someone had to have gone over and shot him on the ground while he was already down from being shot standing. And then waited 43 minutes to call the cops. And as the document said, this shot into Charles's body, body validated their desire for him to die. Lori told police Alex was asked to stay at her house to protect her from Charles when he arrived on the 11th of J July. Alex denied this state. He stayed at the house because they were going to go to a water park or go shooting. So two different statements yeah. there during all of this. So after the murder, a lot of, lot of new details there that Charles was actually lying on the ground when he was shot again. After the murder of Char Charles Vallow, additional text messages and emails were located that would indicate the murder was intentional and according to their master plan. One of these was a message sent from Lori to Chad. The message read, I got the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages that helped us track Charles, Ned, etc. Tammy is very close. Her percentage has fallen steadily since Hiplos left. It is encouraging. Heart emoji, lips emoji. What is that about? You know, so Char or Chad is still married to Tammy Daybell. Yeah, this is July. This is July. So several months. They're still married. Mm -hmm. And Tammy is still alive. But, of course, we know that Chad and Lori are still talking. They think they have this mission to lead the 100 and 44,000. So this whole thing is going again back to those death percentages. And he's saying that Tammy's close and her percentage is following since Hiplos left. Hiplos is dead at this point. Here is an interesting tidbit. On this day, do they date this one? Um, this weekend, around this time, we know that Chad and his family visited Tammy's family in Springville, Utah. And it could very well have been that these text messages were happening as they were with Tammy and her family. And this is July, August, September, three months before Tammy dies. Or four. Four months. Four, July, August, September. Yeah. So, four months. So, yeah. Um, then there's more messages that would also show, according to the police, the intentionality of the murder of Charles. On the day that he died, uh, July 11th, at Let's see, 2331. So 1131 at night. So he'd been dead for almost the whole day at this point. Somebody texted to Lori, redacted, maybe Zulema. As I was working on Hiplos today in the temple, I was told, quote, he will be taken as he is. I don't, IDK, I don't know what that means. Then I was shown to only put light, the brightest light, from the top and the bottom at the same time meeting in the middle. So I've been doing that all day. Okay, and then on the 12th at 1136, blank to blank. Oh, okay, Hiplos is gone. It was a Nephi and Laban ending. I will tell you more when I see you in person or when you see Lori in person. I'm leaving for Chile on Monday for two weeks. So Le Le uh, Nephi is the prophet you were talking about in the Book of Mormon. Laban was the bad guy. Yeah. Then on the 12th, blank to Julie, right? Question mark. It seems like that's a response to it was a Nephi and Laban ending. So who's this Julie? Do we know? Uh, it doesn't say. It just says Julie. This is the only mention of a Julie. Of and that name's not redacted. I don't know if that's on accident or on I don't purpose. Know. And, but again, it says, right, I'm just happy it's over. Yeah, I, that's yeah, the next line. That's Thank the you. next line there. So I don't know. And uh, I mean, boy. Okay, so then, it, then the documents go into a lot about Mormon doctrine, which we've discussed about, uh, you know, Laban and Nephi killing Laban. 
Through interviews conducted with two redacted names, the belief system regarding dark spirits and zombies was revealed. Both witnesses were in direct communication with Lori and Chad and were being provided instructions regarding their missions to prepare for the second coming of Christ. Both indicated that they were told long before July 11th that Charles had died and his body was taken over by an evil spirit. Both witnesses gathered with Lori Vallow prior to July 11th to try and pray the spirits out of his body so Charles' spirit would no longer be in limbo. Now, that one of those people could be Melanie Gibb because Melanie Gibb has told us that Lori had told her that, yeah, Charles had turned into a zombie and that she and and Chad would get together and Lori and Chad would try to pray the zombies out of people. Um, what, do, what, do, what do we learn about what Lori thought was going to happen with Charles coming to town originally so, before he was killed? Yeah, before he was killed, Lori at some point told somebody that when Charles and this blank were coming to town, the brother, she believed that they were going to kill her for life insurance money. And she reached out to a blank person for help. She told this person in a text they needed to speak as soon as possible. Blank reported to, or replied to Lori that she was on the phone trying to figure out what to do. More redactions and Lori asked for the assistance of Blank and Alex Cox to stand by her side for protection. This is when Lori made the comment about being told she was going to be like Nephi. Blank and Blank have both included that Lori got her advice and direction from Chad Daybell. When giving instructions, Blank stated that Lori would always say, I have been told, quote, I have been told. Messages identified above have indicated that Chad Daybell was well aware of the work with zombies and specifically the work that Blank and Lori were doing on Charles prior to set, uh, July 11th. Based on the synopsis and a myriad of other facts, which we don't know yet, we know some, not all, gathered in this case, it's recommended that Lori Vallow be charged with conspiracy to commit murder for the death of her husband, Charles Vallow, on July 11th of 2019. Makes you wonder where Alex would stand in all this if he was alive. I mean, he's been named in multiple court documents as a co-conspirator to the deaths of J.J. Vallow, Tylee Ryan, Tammy Daybell. So, and now Charles. And now Charles, he's listed as that. And we've known all along that he said that he pulled the trigger that killed him. But now there's a little more to that story that we didn't know before. Yeah, yeah, he'd be locked up somewhere. Pro probably in Idaho, if, based on the other two. So, um, Eric, what happens now? I mean, this is a big development from Chandler. and. And Lori's been charged, but she's also here in Idaho locked up. What happens from here? Yeah, so she's still here in Idaho. Her case in Idaho is still pending, but we know that that's been put on hold. It stayed. The judge said that, hey, the psychologist determined that you are not competent for trial and we need to send you to the Department of Health and Welfare to get well so we can bring you back to face these charges. Some people have wondered, oh, will she go straight to Arizona to face these, this new charge down there, but I talked to the uh, attorney's office there and they said that they're gonna wait for Idaho to finish their case before bringing her to Arizona to face that. So this could be some time before Lori is taken down to Arizona to face yeah. this charge. Yeah, because they, she still has to be competent here in Idaho and once she's competent, those, that trial will have to proceed get wrapped up and then there's this and and she could do a video arraignment from idaho to arizona she could go to arizona they could extradite her there and go through a whole new thing they could they could organize some sort of plea agreement where she never really even steps foot in arizona kind of like what they've done with other criminals that have committed big serious crimes in multiple states sometimes they kind of wrap them all together and uh, you know if she it, it, it's all up in the air yeah. from what we know all right, well, good work, Eric, for getting these documents. We have a full story that you can read on East Idaho News that summarizes this. We'll also post this if you haven't seen them that you can read through them yourselves. And uh, another, another big news day. What's yeah. next? It's kind of one of those things. There's always something like this that comes out yeah. one of these days. So We wait, we wait and we see, and we will continue to follow it. Thanks for watching.